This conference will now be recorded. The time being 4.46 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting of January 14th, 2021 to order. Before we get started, please mute your microphone during the meeting unless you want to speak. Otherwise, background noises will interfere with the meeting. As chair of the Tilton Select Board, due to the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis, and in, in accordance with Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12, pursuant to Executive Order 2020-04, this board is authorized to meet electronically, and these reasons shall be reflected in the minutes. Please note, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to the meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, this is to confirm that, A, we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone. Members of the public wishing to attend this meeting electronically, they call the following conference call number, at 1-866-899-4679. The access code is 817-026-717, followed by the pound key. B, additional public access by video or other electronic means will be available as follows. We are using the GoToMeeting platform for this electronic meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and, if necessary, participate remotely using your smartphone, tablet, or computer at global.gotomeet.me uh, forward slash town of Tilton forward slash selectmen. This information can also be found on our website at tiltonnh.org under meeting schedules and agendas under the Board of Selectmen. C, we are providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of how to access the meeting via telephone conference and by go to meeting and Instructions are provided on the town's website at tiltonnh.org and at the town kiosk. D, we are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting that a member of the public wishes to speak or to be recognized during any public comment or public hearing. If you're a member of the public listening in and have questions, please write your questions down at the end of each agenda item, I'll ask if there are any questions from the public before we move on to the next agenda item. Please state your name and address, and then ask your question. E, we are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem, please email web at tiltonnh.org which will be monitored during the meeting. F, we will, <coughs> pardon me. F, we will adjourn the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, we will adjourn the meeting and have it rescheduled at that time. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Uh, let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Given the unusual circumstances, we will dispense with the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, let's take the roll call vote. Um, Constantino. Constantino present. There's one in the room and another one coming very shortly. Dog present. Uh, one dog on it back. The other's in the house somewhere. Um, I'm here and I'm by myself. This is Jasmine. Pyra. 
Pyra here, one sleeping teenage boy, one sleeping dog, two cats. Scanlon. John Scanlon here, and I am by myself. Okay. Um, I'd like to, we have a busy schedule tonight, busy agenda, and I'd like to keep things moving. Um, I'd like to bring the minutes of 1-7 to the floor for discussion. Is there any additions, corrections, or deletions? I have one uh, addition on the, uh, when we were accepting the donations, we made an ex asserted effort, each of us, to thank the God debts, and I thought that that, met, that should be part of the minutes, and there was no mention of that except that there was a donation. And that was it. So I thought maybe if uh, the board wishes, we should probably include that. I'm a yes. Okay. Seeing none, I'll make a motion to, well, I'll, I'll say, are there any other corrections, deletions, or additions? Seeing none, I make a motion to approve the minutes of January 7th as amended. Is there a second? Scanlon, second. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Um, is there any other discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Pyra. Pyra, yes. Scanlon. Scanlon, aye. Constantino. Aye. Ah, uh, yes. Jessamine, yes, the motion carries. Uh, I would make a motion at this time to accept fifteen a fifteen hundred dollar donation from the Teresa Ann Schneider Revocable Trust for Tilton Senior Center. Is there a second? Five seconds. We have a motion and a second by Selectman Fogg. Is there any discussion? Thank you. Okay. Um, and I echo that. Um, we have a motion and a second on the floor. If there's no more discussion. Roll call vote. Um, Pyra. Pyra, yes. Scanlon. Scanlon, yes. Constantino. Yes. Fog, yes. Fog. Jessamine, yes, the motion carries. I would make a motion to accept $100 from the Joe from Joe and Sandy Plessner earmarked for the Tilton Senior Center. Is there a second? Fog, second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Thank you again. Okay, I echo that. I'm sure we all do. If there's no other discussion on the motion, uh, roll call vote. All those in favor say Pyra. Pyra, yes. Evan? Yes. Constantino? Yes. Fog, yes. Jessamine, yes, the motion carries. I make a motion to accept a $100 donation from Bruce and Jean Thompson for the Tilton Senior Center. Is there a second? Fog second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Thanks. This, um, Pat? This donation is going specifically to the uh, bus. Um, I would like to thank Bruce and Jean Thompson for their donation and also Joe and Sandy and Terry Snyder's revocable trust as well. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Pyra. Pyra, yes. Scanlon. Yes. Constantino. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Jessamine, yes, the motion carries. Um, I would like to make a motion to Accept a donation in the amount of $1,000 from the 
David J. Barbudo Trust for the Welfare Department, specifically earmarked for teenagers for Christmas. Is there a second? Fog, second. Uh, have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any discussion? I'd like to thank the Barbudas for their donation. This is uh, almost the yearly donation for the last maybe nine or ten years. They own. They used to own Breakout Tool, um, but they and uh, Tilton Trailer, and they've made this donation almost a yearly one for the Christmas fund. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would also say thank you, certainly. Uh, and uh, is there any other comments? Seeing none. Um, oh, we have a motion. No. Yeah, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Tyra? Tyra, yes. Scanlon? Yes. Constantino? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Jessamine, yes. The motion carries. Thank you very much to all those uh, people who have stepped forward. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is MB Tractor um, to talk about the uh, potential conveyance of Bitter and Lane. Jeannie, would you like to take the floor? Uh, sure. So just as a recap, you remember, I think almost when I first started with the town, uh, I believe it was Catherine Dawson who had made a suggestion that Bitter and Lane be conveyed over to NB Tractor because the entire road is now being plowed by the town and um, the only business on that road is NB Tractor, so it seemed to make sense to convey it over to them and they would have responsibility for it. Um, we were going, we had talked about my first year here to try to put something on the warrant to convey that over. We ran out of time. Uh, I reached back out to uh, Chris, represents NB Tractor, as you said. I reached back out to see if there was any interest in pursuing this. Um, they, I think Chris had a conversation with um, the owners at NB Tractor. He came back and said, yes, this is something we'd, we'd uh, consider looking at. Um, I think I was directed by the board at that time to um, ask the Conservation Commission and the Tilton Northfield Aqueduct Company to weigh in on this, their thoughts on, on the conveyance. I provided to all of you the notes from that meeting back in 2020 and um, my discussions with NHMA of, about what would it need to take to have this happen. It would require two warrant articles. I um, had more than a couple conversations with Chris, myself, and Leanne about property lines and what this would mean and what. Uh, kind of the feedback from the conversation from the Conservation Commission and the Water uh, District at a meeting with the select board. And um, I think Chris was wanted to be here tonight just to speak to this issue. Is am I? Is that correct, Chris? That's you just kind of want to weigh in on it. Because I think at this point we haven't figured out if we're going to go forward or not. You're muted. Yes, uh, that's absolutely correct. And just for the record. Okay. Uh, well, I'm not muted, but I think my internet connection is bad. No, <laughs> Let me move a little. Not. Can you all hear me better now? Yes. Okay. Um, let me move closer to my router. So just for the record, my name is Chris Winiarski, and I am an attorney here on behalf of MB Tractor. Uh, and yes, everything that Jeannie said was correct. And I, I think to put a little bit more color on it, um, I, I watched the YouTube video of the last Board of Selectmen meeting, and I think maybe there was a, a little bit of misunderstanding by the Conservation Commission, and, and it's probably understandable. I mean, typically they are giving their input in response to a, a permit application or a request, and as they typically do, they sort of came back with a shopping list of things they would like to see. 
Um, and, and we were a little surprised by that because we're, we're not asking for a permit here. Uh, we're, we're really offering to relieve the town uh, of the responsibilities and burdens of maintaining, repaving, snow plowing Bittern Lane. Um, and, and only for the logical reasons that uh, probably uh, former uh, select person Dawson raised. It's we're the only we're the only property owner on that road. Uh, my client happens to be involved in the type of business where maintaining the road is not a big deal for him at all. Um, so really, the the entire concept just makes sense. But we, in exchange for that, I mean, we we thought relieving the town of those burdens was a pretty good deal for the town, um, and we weren't prepared to give a whole bunch of things in exchange. And I know a lot of the discussions sort of started going around uh, public access to Ice House Pond. And Ice House Pond is not a public water body. It's private property, um, not entirely owned by my client. But it, it just seemed like sort of the, the whole, uh, maybe not the tone, but the, the concept was lost on the Conservation Commission. And then in turn, I think perhaps the uh, this board may have Sort of not not realize the distinction that i'm making here and that's really what i wanted to clarify this seems like it's mutually beneficial to both my client and the town uh it's not something my client needs necessarily it, it does offer us some conveniences um and we have spent uh forty thousand dollars on on improvements to bitter and lane already um so it offers us some convenience but it offers the town um quite a bit of financial savings as well and that that's really what this is about it's, it's not about you know putting up guardrails and public access to ice house pond that's not something uh that would be a smart thing for us to do at all but that's really all i had to say i just wanted to sort of clarify uh the situation that we have here um and i can certainly answer any questions that anyone has you're muted Okay, I'm unmuted. Thanks, Tim. Uh, um, there, is there any questions for this gentleman from the Board of Selectmen? Peter has his hand up. Yep, Peter. Uh, in regards to the water district in their line, would MB Tractor entertain a maintenance easement along the road to give them access? Because they're trying. I thought was trying to turn the line over to you and if you just give them the easement they should be maintaining it yeah I think we could do that um they may already have that easement as well but okay. yeah I don't think I mean we wouldn't have a problem with that because we we obviously uh actually we use their water for one of our buildings not the other one I think they had some exorbitant fee for the back building so we ended up uh, drilling a well instead um I can talk to my client about that, and I, I don't think that would be a problem at all. Um, just so the board knows, the sewer commission has done that uh, on properties and all. And as long as we have an easement, we can take over the line. That's when you restrict the access that you can't really take it over. So I think that's how we can handle the water district. Yeah, okay. I'm sure we'd be amenable to that. Is that it, Peter? Okay, how about you, John? No, John? I, yes, I, yeah, I just uh, unmuted. Um, I, I heard a lot of opposition from people in town on it. Uh, they presently use it for fishing and um, recreational purposes. I believe there's a conservation easement on all of that as well. So it's... Um, you know, under that, and it's a, a, an area that's enjoyed by the residents. This would remove that because that's the only access that's left to it. The other problem is, you know, keeping snow from being plowed in there, vehicles parked on it, and all that on the uh, conservation easement through there. Um, but yeah, and I've only heard opposition. So and that's that's the sort of thing would be something that would be appropriate. Sorry. And, and that's exactly what I wanted to clear up. Um, that's not true. There's no conservation easement on it, and people do go there, but they are trespassing when they go there, and, and that's not necessarily a big problem. But that's where a, a lot of this sort of opposition has come from, is from the mistaken belief that that 
that the public has rights to that property. Uh, it does not. It, it's it's private property. There there is absolutely no public rights to Ice House Pond. Who owns that? Uh, my client owns to the center of it, and the property on the other side owns to the center. And there's no conservation easement from the other side? Um, I suppose there, you know, I haven't done the title research on the other side, but I highly doubt that there's a conservation easement from the other side. Um, I know there isn't one from my client's side, so anything that we would be doing as an owner of Bitter and Lane would would not change the status quo. But I, but I got to tell you, I, I, I'm almost positive there's no conservation from easement from the other side. I know for a fact there isn't one from my client's side. Yeah, there is a conservation easement on the other side. It was part of the Walmart uh, site plans and uh, mitigation for it. Okay, so again, if even if that is true, that doesn't have any effect on the Bittern Lane side, and there's no there's no conservation easement affecting the Bittern Lane side. And I'll take a look and see because I'm not aware of any conservation easement. I'll take your word for it for now, but I, it's the first I've heard of it. Um, did do you happen to have a a book and page or anything like that, or you're saying it was just a a condition of the Walmart approval? I have it. Okay. Book, book 1304, page either zero or D764. Okay. I'll take a look, but I, I do know it's not on my client's side. Uh, we've done some pretty extensive title research on this, and there, there is no conservation easement affecting our land. It, there's also a copy of it on the Town of Tilton website under okay. conservation. Uh, conservation on the bottom easements and it's number six okay so but yeah it, I don't... Does, it does say no public use allowed oh well interesting so <laughs> I, I don't know then what I mean I, I guess so we have a lot of confusion here and that that's the reason we have this clarification so again I, I don't have anything to do with the conservation easement, but to to have requests that further a violation of that conservation easement are, of course, a problem, um, has no effect on our side. But if, in fact, the property uh, that Walmart is located at has a conservation easement, it, it means nothing to the land next door. Other other questions for the, the gentleman? Pat? I have a couple of questions. One is if MB Tractor is willing to give a an easement to the water and fire, because I understand that there's a fire hydrant there as well. Well, yeah, I mean, there was some discussion that we would have to take over the fire hydrant and the costs associated there with um, we could certainly give an easement to the fire department, but the, the fire department doesn't need an easement, I, I don't think, as a as the fire department, just like the um, you know, the police don't need an easement, but we, we could do that. That's not a problem. And the other, um, the other question is more directed at the board because of my lack of knowledge on this, that if we turn the, the road over to MB Tractor, he they still have to abide by the shoreline ordinance is that correct that still stays in effect am i am i correct in that um no parking on that side where the pond is to it like it's like 20 foot setback and all that am i correct in that board john do you know that um, as far as i know yeah, they, I, I mean, I can clarify that a little bit probably and give you the answer you're looking for. The, you know, the, the conveyance of the, the road doesn't change any land use regulations at all, um, unless you're talking about a regulation with parking on a public street, which I don't think you're talking about. Um, you know, the other thing to note is that the, the part of Bittern Lane that the town actually owns is not the entirety of what you would think is Bittern Lane all the way up to my client's driveway. 
not exactly sure where the line is between what my client currently owns and what the town owns. I know that um, Jeannie and the town planner, whose name I just forgot. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, had had some evidence suggesting one line. I had some evidence suggesting another. You know, where that line is, I guess, doesn't matter that much. But to answer the question, no, no land use regulations are changed um, to the extent you're talking about a prohibition on parking on on public roads. None of those would apply because it would no longer be a public road. Right. This is more 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 the shoreline ordinance um, yeah so none of that okay. changes all right so the the other point that john brought up was that i mean he's received uh, phone calls in opposition so i think that putting it on the warrant article would the people in opposition would nest would probably be in, in uh would come to the town meeting and present their opposition. So either way, and that would be a good point for us. Um, at least we get it on onto the warrant article. Um, and it might make sense if, if you do choose to do a warrant article to clarify some of those misconceptions that those people have, that it's not in fact open to the public because if their, if their opposition stems from a mistaken belief that it, it it's it's only ethical and, and it makes good sense to give them the correct information. Correct, right. So, in reference to uh, in reference to the misconception that we owned the uh, the pond, then the concons uh, the conservation commission's request to put a guardrail up would be out of that's sort of out of um, context because we don't own the pond. You own the pond. Okay. That's I just wanted to make sure. I think the MB tractor the property starts past the back of the Agway, old Agway building. Yes. Okay, so the first 100 feet is not, ag is not MB tractor property. Correct. I don't know if it's a hundred, but there there's a segment that is not, yeah. and, and we have a good relationship so, with them, and we've talked to them. So they would need an access easement, which we're happy to provide. We've we've been talking to them about this since uh, these discussions first came up over a year ago. So that that's not a problem. And yes, we would expect to give them an access. Easement. So MB Tractor does not own the first 50, 75 feet. What, whatever, I don't know what the number is, but yes, there's a segment that we don't know. Okay. And, but they want to take that part. No. All the way up to route three and 11, right? Yeah, no, that that's correct. All the way, all the way up to route three. I mean, the, the point of it is that nobody is using it other than NB tractor and um, it was auto fair, but I think that may have recently changed. Auto serve, auto -serve right. Auto serve, right. right. It's changing over to new car, right? Yeah, and and that was the point. So yeah, Bitterin Lane would would cease to exist. Um, that that would simply be a, a shared driveway uh, between MB Tractor and, and the other business that's there. And we're totally on board with giving them an access easement, and we'll have the responsibility to maintain it. We're not going to put the the burden of of maintenance or or uh, snow plowing or anything like that on that property. We're we're going to keep that that burden. I, I'm, I'm finished with my questions. Thank you. I appreciate the clarification, Chris. Joe, Peter? Um, even though it goes private, I would hope uh, MB would keep the bitter in lane so then you can number the lots for 911 purposes. Yeah, I don't, that, I don't see that as a yeah. problem. We could do that. I hadn't, I actually hadn't so, thought of that, but yeah, that's a good so, idea. So, all it is is better in lane private road. Yeah, yep. Thank you, Joe. Okay, um, yes, Eric. I'm just looking at the tax map and it looks like the lot 22, which is Sherwood, um, whoever, whatever owns the Sherwood 
uh, has half the pond in lot five, which is the back part of um, MB Tractor, is owns the other half, and then the Agway owns a little bit. And on the tax mat, there is the word easement in there, but it doesn't really say what the easement is or where it is. Yeah, I think that's approximate and about right. Um, we we actually have all the title work and the surveys that give the the actual definitive lines, but that's that's a good enough approximation for discussion purposes. Yeah, it says 163 feet on one side, but the other side doesn't equal anywhere close to that. So I don't know. That's it. Is there anybody else? Does anybody want to make a motion? Oh, I think we well, should just we'll go ahead and put it on the on the uh, as a warrant article. That would be just my suggestion, um, it, and that only takes consensus. Oh, would you like a motion? I'd rather have a motion. I think. Joe, I'd make a motion that we put on the warrant Bittern Lane to be turned over to uh, the property, abutting property owners, conditional upon necessary easements with abutting property owners and utilities. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. Um, is there any further discussion? So you're going to make a motion to, to make a warrant, and then you're going to make a motion to recommend the warrant. Because we usually put a warrant, we usually do consensus to put a warrant on the, uh, on the, a warrant article on the warrant, and then we make a motion to recommend or not recommend to the public. Um, I don't know if that's a problem. Jeannie, that's not a problem, is it? So, well, what I would recommend is is you direct me to draft the war, the appropriate warrant articles, um, which I will do. And and it was in the notes I had given you before, so I just want to be clear. The first warrant article would be to dis to discontinue the road subject to the requirement that um, the Till Northfield Aqueduct Company shall be entitled to ingress and egress for maintenance of the water line and hydrant, and there be an access easement. Oh, can't, no. So there's got to be one, there's got to be two articles, one to discontinue the road and one to convey the property over to the abutting property owner. So I guess what I would be looking for you tonight is to direct me to draft those two warrant articles, which then I will bring to you next week and at that time, you can vote to accept the warrant articles or not. Right. So we don't need approval. We just need to direct her to do it. Right. I, uh, yeah. I, gotta, I, I have to draft them for you to look at. Right. I will withdraw my second. So I, I would suggest that we direct Jeannie to, to, to uh, draw up the two articles necessary for the uh, Bittern Lane. Is there any objections? No, just John make a motion and move on. John, John, has, John has one. John? Yeah, you know, a lot of what we're discussing is, I think, I believe, and I'm not sure it's somewhere around this area or that area. I think that we should be looking at it with some site plans and get some factual information on ownership and how it would um, do that before we just say we're going to turn it over. You reference the abutting property owners map and lot and it's done. And I, I can provide you with I'd service. like to see that information. That's all. Tax you know, maps are notoriously incorrect on information. So if you go by those dimensions, they may not be actually correct when you go to the survey. I think at this point, we are just discussing the uh, sending Jeannie forth to draft warrant articles. Uh, we can have further discussion. 
uh, certainly um, at that time. Uh, point of order, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, Pat. Chris was talking and somebody was talking over him and I didn't get a chance to hear what he had to say. I, I was just going to say that, um, you know, between now and next week, while while Jeannie is working on drafting, I can also provide uh, the surveys and materials that we have so that she can uh, have any references she needs in the, in the drafting. And then the board can also have those to, to look at and discuss next week. Okay. Thank you. Are there objections? Seeing none, uh, you have a consensus to move forward, Jeannie. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, and I'll, I'll follow up with you, Jeannie, um, in the next couple of days to give you what I have, and uh, we'll take it from there, and I'll see all of you next week. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Okay, next thing on our agenda is a uh, lot subdivision on Pest House Road. Um, by Jennifer Adams and her husband. Uh, it's a class six road, and they, so they need approval from the selectmen we for can't driveway. Hear you, Joe. Joe, we can't hear you. I, oh my, I, I, I don't know why. Nope. My I microphone is on. You. Uh, you're you're coming can, through loud and clear. I can, yeah, I can hear him. Pat, can you hear me? It's Pat. I think it's on Pat's end. Yeah, I can hear him. Everybody can hear him except Pat. I think. Correct. I'll get, I'll give her a call. You want to come out and come back? It's you, Pat. It's <laughs> no. It's not us. Where are her headphones? Are you texting Same her? Second. Can you hear me now, Pat? Yep. Go ahead, okay, Jim. you're back. Can you hear me? Nope. All right, she's working on her headset. I have too many headsets okay. here. Well, is uh, Mrs. or Mr. Adams here? Looks like they're here. We're here. Are you back, Pat? Can, here, you hear Joe. Me? Okay. can you hear me? Okay, good enough. Yes, I can. Um, so, uh, Mrs. Adams, Mr. Adams, would you like to present your proposal? Sure. Um, so, we are looking to subdivide up off from Pest House Road, and um, my dad owns the property. Um, he owns a 40 acre lot and a 140 acre lot up there and we want permission to build off from the class six road so that's why we're talking with you guys we need a driveway permit and permission to build and subdivide i provided the board in the board packet and i think i also sent it to you in an email a copy of a sketch that david krause had done for the Adams. Well, I'm going to put it up on the screen uh, if you like. I've got one. I've got one. So, because it's a class six road um, on Pest House Road, this class six road, they need to get permission from the board to. Um, one, build the driveway, and two, build the house. Um, Mr. Chair, I had a question. Uh, How, hi, Eric and Jen. Nice hi. To see you hey, Pat. Hi, nice to see you again. Um, How far up from Caliph Hill 
is this? Not very far at all. It's just beyond that house that's right on the corner. My my dad also owns that house there, and it's just beyond that house. Between yeah. the between the um, graveyard and that house. Yep. I was going to ask where, where it is from the cemetery. Okay. Yep. It's before the cemetery and about 250 to 300 feet from the intersection of Caleb Hill. 250, 300 feet? Yes, about that. Got it. Got it. Joe, I have a question. Peter. What is the green delineating, Mr. Krause? The green is a tree line. That's, uh, okay, I wanted to make sure it was tree line versus wetlands, that's all. Yep. There, there's been no survey work or wetlands uh, delineation or anything done up there yet. The wetlands I'm thinking of is up to the right of the green, correct? Going around the bend? Yep. Um, okay. Yeah, they're down by approximately where the 850 feet is. There's a that little pond that's down in there. Okay. Yeah. Because there is a wet area when you go around the bend on the left. I think it's because of the ledge has perched the water. Yep. Yep, this is where the proposed lot is up on the hill. Are there other questions? I think Pat has. Pat? So you, what you're doing is you're adding another house to that existing road, Pest House Road, correct? So you're, adding, so you're adding more traffic coming into that corner. Yes, we, there will. Yes. Are you so, going? Are you doing any grading at all to that corner that, that's on there, or is it up above, further up above there? So we haven't really got that far yet, and that was something we wanted to talk about with you guys. Was what. Uh, we we have seen um, the other agreement that you've done in 2019 with uh, somebody who built on the other end of Pest House, but so we were looking at that and and we were going to we haven't even that's what we had for questions too what we would need to do to be able to to build there and put our lot there um, and we actually were wondering where the Class Six road actually starts and the Class Five ends because. We thought there might be some questions in regards to how far up Pest House when it turns into a, a Class 6 road or, or how that all works. That's a good question because I believe it be, it ends just after Caliph before the driveway. If I remember correctly, Joe, you probably answer that one. It ends, I think, just before the driveway of that house on the right-hand side. I could be wrong, though. Uh, I think you're right, Pat. I do Is believe there a you're way correct. that we can find that out? Uh, yeah, in the road book. Oh, Dave's got his hand up. He'll probably be, no, he's done it. Dave? Dave? Um, I, I have looked at the uh, road records, and I, I've read it. I don't have that off the top of my head what it is, but it's somewhat vague. It's not clear to me that it's either at the driveway or it may even be at the cemetery. I can be yeah, so if it's at the cemetery, if it's in fact at the cemetery, that's beyond where we're building. But if it if it's before, it would be before. So we just wanted to be able to confirm and figure that out as well. That would also change what the effect is because you're build then you're getting a driveway permit on a class five road and not on a class six road. Okay. And would we yep. and we would still need board approval for that, is that correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. And and to be t completely transparent, we also do want to run my business out of our home, so there will be some traffic that will be going up there. Well, that would be a plan. The issue of you being allowed to use that for business would be an issue for the planning board. Okay, and that would so that'd be like a second step thing. So you'd probably yeah, yeah. want to you probably want to go to them as soon as possible to see if it's permitted and all of that. Okay. 
just ju just a uh, what do you conditional type of thing. Just go ahead and go see Leanne and talk with her. Okay. See what the zone allows for businesses, and if yours fits in, whether it's strict, you can special exception or variance. Okay. Great. It, I think yeah. they came conceptually. Uh, for the house or the business, Eric. I think I think the business was mentioned, okay. but uh, it was just conceptually, so they couldn't. I don't think we could say yes or no. I, I Joe, if I may, I just have one more question. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Is did anyone think of an alternative for a driveway onto Caliph instead of Pest House, where that yeah. corner is such a bad corner? So here's a couple, there's a couple other things with that. Yes. So we met with um, people from the New Hampshire, the state in regards to a driveway permit on Caliph Hill Road. But due to the fact that there's no line of sight down the road with the two hills in the corner, we weren't able to get one through the state. That's why we moved it up there. It would have been ideal if we could have had it further down, but it just isn't going to work that way. Um, and then the other question that we had is, so the way the road used to be is you could turn up Pest House taking that left, like if you're coming from the veterans home coming up. But if you're coming up the hill from like where we live now, down down in the middle of the, the, the two hills, if you're coming up towards Pest House, you used to be able to go straight up that hill and you wouldn't have to go around that corner. You could go straight up. But my dad and my grandfather said that at some point, um, he thinks Dennis Allen was working for the the public works department then and they just put up a like some pieces of wood and planted some grass and like closed that off but they and they were never consulted on that i don't know what that went through or anything like that but my dad we were just wondering why that was and if and what the deal was with that like if it was safer for us to open that back up if we were to build up there if we would be able to do that and then you could drive straight up or come around the corner the other way Right, because I mean, I can tell you, I mean, some of you know that I am in law enforcement, so I can tell you having it, if you're coming off of Pest House, uh, it does only curve down Caliph Hill towards. And so sometimes that line of sight, if you want to go left, uh, it could be dangerous. And so it's, it, it, so I guess, you know, when we were talking with Tom, it's trying to really figure out kind of um, is there a possibility that we can figure out a way or find out why it was made so that that was that slope was, was done. It, it was a washout uh, issue from what uh, Tom had, had said, um, but we're kind of wondering like, is there something that you know, the town and us can can work together on, you know, if this all gets approved as to how we could make that, uh, you know, a, a, a drive straight up through and continue to have like the slope, how that would work just because for safety reasons, I mean, and, and things like that. I mean, obviously, we would want to deal with having uh, more of a washout issue because um, that's that would be more dangerous. But, um, you know, for for thinking down the road. Um, you know that that was a concern. That that was a real washout issue to begin with, and that's why yeah. uh, one of the reasons it was created, and that was the reason why it was filled in a little bit because it came in on um, the Daniels property across the street and across the road and created yeah. an ice issue for yes. DOT. Yeah. So I'm wondering if if. <clears throat> If it was if it was done, um, you know, in a manner where it was graded, and you know there was, um, you, you know, the road was set up uh, properly. I'm not sure how that would work, but um, and then I guess you know I think we need to kind of look at is that part of the Class Five road? Uh, is that something the town would deal with, or is that you know what I mean? So I, I think there's those questions up in the air, but really we, we're we're looking to see what your thoughts are um, about, you know, allowing us to to build um, 
you know, and, and what your thoughts are on that. It's kind of, we're back on the, on the list for Caliph Hill being redone. So now's the time to think about those questions and, and try to get those questions answered because uh, Caliph, it, hopefully within the next five years or so, we're going to get Caliph redone, re-engineered and, and so the drainage and everything else is going to be done. Now's the time to get in on those kinds of questions because that's when uh, it's, it all should be done right now. Yeah. So, yeah. Those are, good those are, man. Yeah. yeah those, those are good I'm questions because it, it spills in on the state, so the state should be involved in some of that. Yeah. State I'm will work to that. their right of way. What's that? All the, all the state's going to do is work to their right of way. Right, exactly. But they're going to be concerned with the drainage of their right of way. They're going to be highly concerned because that's the of place. Theirs, but not Caliph Hill, Pat. That's our problem. We have to take care of it. We can't Only dump our water onto them. Just like they're not supposed to dump it onto us. Right. But, you know, up where Centers is, they're really highly concerned about the ice buildup and that they were, that's when they put the drainage up, up there, right? Well, your ice ice is going to be more is your ditching and stuff correct? Mm -hmm. And also your trees. If you've got a country road with big canopies, even if their leaves are gone, it's blocking a lot of the sun. Um, you don't get a lot of melt in the winter. But pest house kind of crowns over, kind of crowns above uh, Caliph, which kind of crowns this way, and it comes the ice comes off of it onto the left side. And that's what was happening. Uh, my question is, does this, necess this conversation, although an important one in the scheme of things, have anything to do with subdividing the property? The property for a, was, a lot. Say it again. It was? Yeah. Yes, we need, to, we need to subdivide the property. And that's why Dave's here. He's helping us with that. Yeah, that's that's the issue before us now, not the uh, reopening of Pest House Road, I think. Correct. That's uh, what we need to, yes. Okay, then. Uh, what do we have to do to uh, subdivide the property? Just make a motion to allow for the subdivision. Isn't that a planning board issue? Um, well, it's on what, a, so what's before, you, what's, well, go ahead, David. I was going to say, I think we were here just because it doesn't make sense to go to the planning board and do all the work necessarily for that if the selectmen were not going to be granting a building permit and a driveway permit on the class five or six road. Um, we just wanted, I guess, basically the blessing that, yeah, you're okay with the concept of this. Um, moving forward and and I think that's what we were looking for Jen does that absolutely yeah we just we before we invested and kept going further we need to know that we're even gonna we can put a driveway there and that we can build so if there if the, if the board is in agreement to allow them to go forward and and give them the driveway permit and the authority to build the house they would um, much like the, the last time around, they would, not for you folks, but the other folks on Pest House Road, there's an agreement release that we would prepare um, that you would sign off on and the selectman would sign off on. Um, so that's, if the board makes that decision tonight, we would draw that up and then they would sign that the next time they meet. But something we wanted to be clear with with that was exactly where the, the road was if it does in fact go to the cemetery or not and i i um i um had texted the the land use coordinator she's she's working from home and doesn't have access so we can get the she said she could answer that question but she doesn't have access to the the information tonight so we can get that answered for you um and then i guess if you want to wait until um, I mean, I don't know what, what the urgency is of this. If you want to get that answer, then come back 
you know, in front of the board and have them vote on it, or how you want to proceed, really. And it could you could wait, get that answer, um, come back to the board, ask them after they thought about it if they agree. If they if, if they agree, I'll have the paperwork, you know, ready for them to sign in case they do agree. Yeah, and either way, we do want to be able to subdivide and build, no matter if it is a class six or a class five road. Um, so I'm not sure if that plays into their decision, but either way, we are looking for that answer. John? So, uh, let's see, am I muted? No, I'm not, okay. Um, so, you know, I, I I'm personally support the uh, subdivision, but I don't, or subdividing that lot, However, I don't think that we can specifically say that you can get a per driveway permit or not because that would be dependent on where you locate it and um, you know other things. That would be up to the planning board, and I don't think we can give you an okay, um, car planch to build a driveway. It would have to be site plan. That's okay. my because so we were originally sent to your board to approve us of a driveway permit off the class six. And that was my understanding. So I, I guess I'll go back and confirm that, but that was my understanding that they needed to come to the select board first um, to get approval. I, yeah, I but we don't know exactly where the road ends. We need plans <laughs> to do that. It might be on a class five road. For a class six, they come before the board, but we don't know where the class six en ends, begins and ends with the fi class five. David has his hand up. Joe, maybe you can clarify. Um, I don't see David, but David, go ahead. Um, yeah, I was having trouble finding this. I'm on your town website. Um, in 1932, Article 6 of the town meeting, vote to instruct the selectmen to petition the superior court to make the road parentheses present day april 2004 pest house road close parentheses running westerly from the daniels farm to franklin subject to gates and bars passed so um the way i would read that would be from the daniels farm not from Caliph Hill Road, but from the Daniels Farm west to Franklin. I don't know if anything's been done since that, but that's, I did see that once before and I was looking for that while you guys were discussing. So where in proximity is Daniels Farm from the, from where you're building? I would assume that Daniels Farm would be the 40 acres, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Is that what you think? What, 40? The Daniels I, farm, would that be on the 40 yeah. My dad's here. He's saying the Daniels farm would be on the 40 acres. Okay, so you're so, in front of it. Yeah. Okay. So you're Joe? in front of it. Yes, Peter. One thing you may want to consider, because even if it is on a class five, what you're proposing to do, you're causing all the impact. The planning board may ask you to do the upgrades necessary at that intersection as part of your site plan approval. So you may want to keep that in the back of your mind and get some estimates on that um, as a cost. I don't know if it'll happen or not, but it's better to be prepared. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm kind of in favor of what they want to do. I just have a couple of questions that I think that are unanswered and we're unable to actually make that determination tonight because we don't have the exact we don't have measurements and we don't have exactly what it is that you want to do so I think if we get more information I I wouldn't have any problems with it okay You've basically taking the words right out of my mouth Pat. Um, that's unusual <laughs> I know you're right. Uh, I, I have no objections whatsoever, but we do need to find out where the road switches over and exactly where our responsibility, the Board of Selectmen, is opposed to the planning board um, begins. So 
uh, we'll get those answers. And if you'd like to make arrangements with Jeannie uh, to come before us again, once we get those answers, uh, I'm thinking it might be a real quick process at that point. Great. Okay. okay. Yep. That sounds great. Okay. Great. Thank Is you there all. Anything else? Well, we uh, might. Thank you very much. Nice to see you again. You too. Thanks. Have a good Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Next on the agenda is the police department moving bids. Um, we reviewed some bids a couple of weeks ago and had questions. Hopefully, we can choose a moving company this evening so we can get a signed contract and secure the date. You should have all received some information in your email and it is also in your board packet. Uh, so we have a, a lady named Lisa Osher. Uh, Lisa. Who should be on the line. Is that correct? Um, I, I asked, I um, thought we could start out uh, looking over everything and that if you have questions I can't answer, we can bring Lisa on the call. Okay. If that's acceptable. Does everybody have a copy of the bits? Uh, I, I don't in front of me, but I mean, we... A moving is moving to me, so I'm not really concerned with this. Tim and Jeannie and Lisa, and I understand Gail have worked very diligent on on these uh, companies. So I'm o I'm okay with that, and I would gracefully move that we uh, let them decide which one that they go with because a moving company is a moving company and they have thoroughly investigated it so i would make a motion to allow Jeannie, tim and lisa and gail to make the pick and get the process going is there a second no <laughs> okay i, tr I tried um I appreciate how, that. How about, how about um, I make a motion that we contract with Starving Artist Movers for the uh, amount of $7,884 for the move between the old police station and the new police station. Second, uh, Constantino. Okay. Um, this is the highly recommended uh, moving company uh, recommended by Tim and Jeannie. It's also the cheapest one, the least expensive bid that we received. Um, is there anybody who would like to speak to the motion? Okay, hearing none. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Ira. Byra, yes. Scanlon. Yes. Constantino. Yes. Fog, yes. Fog. Deciman, yes. The vote motion is unanimous. Please move forward. <laughs> Pass and quit. Uh, the next that's thing great. is audio. Pardon? I said, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, the next thing on the agenda is audio visual equipment and uh, this will be Tim presenting information on the AV equipment in the EOC emergency operations center room at the new police department Tim you have the floor let's see Thank if you, you can do it let's see if you can do as, as well as I just did uh, I, uh, <laughs> the outcome and, okay uh, let's I'm, 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 ready. I'm, ready. I'm, ready. I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready one thing to the board though because uh, you're gonna make me very happy in that uh, I'm going to win a bet with Jeannie on the the length of this meeting thanks to that that discussion of the moving bid <laughs> So should I make a motion well, now? Tim? I just pulled into the lead on this one. So I, that'll make my day regardless. Um, so let me uh, share my screen and in your, uh, in the board packet um, is um, a folder and it has three options. Uh, so 
So essentially, we had we had two companies bid on this. Uh, one of which was, um, I mean, they're both very um, very capable companies. We felt very good about both of them. Uh, one was a, a little more. Um, this was a smaller project for them. Let me put it that way. This was a smaller project for them, and we didn't garner quite as much attention from them. The other company uh, was uh, very responsive to us, and uh, and we went to go see their uh, an installation of theirs uh, just recently completed that would be very similar to what we're looking at here. And uh, and we and Jeannie and I discussed the different options with them while we were uh, on that site visit. Uh, this company is also the one that's done a number of the uh, the work, a number of the room, Fulton School conference rooms, as well as the auditorium and all the audio visual that's in the auditorium. So uh, I know that uh, several, if not all of you, have been uh, present at different events at Tilton School and probably not noticed it because uh, it's um, uh, it was a very impressive uh, display when we went um, down to Concord uh, to look at this company that uh, uh, where these items were being installed. So the three options. The last time I uh, met with the board and discussed this, I was asked to uh, uh, pair things back to the bare minimum. Well, the bare minimum turns out to be about thirty-four thousand dollars, and and gives the very basics of. Um, of a high-end um, uh, projector, a screen, and uh, some, some basic audio visual. There are not a lot of options. Uh, Joe, if you don't mind, I'm gonna mute you, because I think yours is where we're getting annoyed. Yep. There we go. Um, so the, uh, and, and um, I guess, I can't see you all, just so that you know, in case you have your hand up or something. Um, somebody's going to have to unmute and just speak because I'm looking at the screens. So, in any event, this uh, the the middle quote uh, has a little bit more. So it has an upgraded microphone system where the board of selectmen could meet there, uh, or any other uh, committee for that matter. There would be a total of eight microphones available say a speaker, a panel, and then uh, public, as well as an administrator. And, uh, and that, again, is, uh, is kind of an upgrade from the, the base system. And then the, the very full system, that includes uh, an, pretty much just about uh, everything that, that we could want in there to make the, the, the greatest utility and function for an audio visual system meeting the needs of the town. In other words, um, selectmen's meetings could be held in there and broadcast uh, just as you were doing upstairs, but with a, a much more professional camera uh, mounted on the ceiling that, um, that all the equipment there could be run from. Uh, they have these panels. <laughs> My chair is slowly uh, losing air here. So, uh, Forgive me if I seem to be sinking in my chair, but in any event, um, and this is my chair from home. This is not a town chair. Uh, I've still got to replace that. But in any event, the, uh, uh, the panels uh, allow for pre-configuration. So if you think of a tablet, if you will, uh, where you can plug in in two locations in the room and uh, control uh, and have a preset system so that you can set it up that uh, that's going to do certain things based on the type of meeting you're going to have, or um, or the type of presentation, or or if there are two different things going on in the back versus the front, uh, allows for that too. So uh, it can be controlled either from the back of the room or the front of the room. Uh, so say from a podium, a presenter could be controlling what's happening. It could also be controlled from the back of the room or towards the back of the room on the side so that uh, someone like myself could be, um, could be managing that while there's something going on in the room. Uh, Jeannie and I had envisioned uh, trying to make full use of this room so that it, it's more than just an empty space, that it, that it has uh, 
you know, great amount of utility for the town and, and being able to hold selectmen's meetings there where there's more parking, uh, easier, maybe easier accessibility uh, for people and also um, uh, having a higher end audio system where there aren't difficulties of hearing or uh, problems with speakers or feedback or other things that, um, you know, it'd be a, a big benefit. We do have, and we have been working with, uh, for just for the purposes of the worst case scenario, having the $56,000 scenario in the contingency. So, uh, so that that number was put in uh, and working with all the other numbers, looking at how we're gonna end up uh, with the total project. Uh, I've been using that number as a worst case scenario for this project, but, um, but I would I would like uh, before you ask questions of me if maybe Jeannie could speak a little bit about um, about what she saw and why she thinks this is important as well uh, and and please don't feel free you need to be brief on my account due to our little wager. <laughs> well, I, um, as Tim said, we both did go down there and take a look at what they had to offer and. Uh, by no means, I know it's the highest number, but by no means is it like top of the line. It's it's very nice. I think it's it will suit the town of Tilton for many years to come. It will make that room much more uh, friendly. Uh, as Tim said, and I said, and it's totally up to all of you, but I think it would be a perfect uh, place to hold selectmen's meetings, public hearings. Uh, I see us getting a lot of a great use out of it uh, for years to come. And I know it's the higher number, but I think it's going to be money well invested so that, you know, 10 years, if, if we go from middle of the road or even at the low end, that, you know, five years down the road, 10 years down the road, we're not having an upgrade or have problems. So um, you all know uh, Tim's uh, technical expertise on this. On this um, kind of issue and I know John has a lot of experience as well so maybe he has something he'd, he'd like to say weigh in on it but I, I think it's the way to go and I, I support uh, this and again I know it's a lot but it's um, I think it's it's the right decision. John? He's muted. I think you're muted John. Oh, here we go. Won't go on then. There it is. Slow there. Um, yeah, can, can I put a side bed in too? Yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, no, you know, I, I, I'm for it. But my concern is, is the uh, expense... Um, and that it's an emergency operation center. I, th I think we should be getting grants or something. It's not like a regular PD meeting room anymore. It's being used as an emergency operation center. Um, and, you know, and, and the other part that I'm concerned about is security, uh, people coming in and out and access to the public. Pretty much anybody can go to a town meeting or a selectman's meeting. Who's going to be kind of watching over? Because now they're on the inside of the police station past the secure area or within the secured area. Um, so that that's my concern is uh, whether or not we're actually intending to build a, a um, operate emergency operations center for in our police department. I don't know. Well, so uh, if I may, the um, as a comment, Tim. Oh, okay. Uh, so when the uh, the access controls were designed and then the committee, the committee wanted to be sure that that there was utility to this, that it wasn't totally an emergency operation plan, but it could be a meeting. I can hear you. And for other things, and and the you can't hear me. Thank you. Well, it's, it's Joe, very, it's very much. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Uh, so in any event, the uh, uh, the access controls were uh, were configured in such a way. 
Uh, you don't hear me, Peter? Hello? Let me see here. Can you all hear me? Oh, there, better. That's much better. Oh, no. oh okay. Yes. Um, so, um, hang on one second. All right, so, um, <laughs> let me think. <laughs> Access control panels. Thank you. The access controls for the room, and I have to, uh, yeah. The access controls, it's been a long day, long week. Uh, the access controls for the, the, the building were designed in such a way because the committee wanted to be sure that people could be uh, let through that first door into the lobby area, and then the, the entire admin and squad wing and the entire detective and interview wing, that's all uh, access controlled, as I'm, I'm sure John is aware, so that, uh, that there isn't access to the public through either one of those uh, without them having a badge or some other means uh, to get in. And, uh, and that the room uh, is, is right there off that inner, inner lobby, if you will, or inner vestibule. Um, and you know that was one of the designs that the committee felt was really important to have was that that particular um, you know use of that room for things. So uh, you know, so from an EOC standpoint, I can tell you that uh, when the chief originally reviewed the requirements for this room, I would say that everything, with the exception of the camera system to broadcast, you know, such as what we're doing now, but at a higher quality, um, was, you know, was in there. So, uh, so everything that he identified in terms of being able to, to train, to present, to have the EOC, um, uh, I forget what it's called, but the, um, there's a state EOC board that they can put up that shows all the events and all the things that are taking place, as well as have on their other monitors, uh, they can have the weather up on one, they can have uh, cameras up on another, uh, either throughout town or throughout the state. There's a number of different things that he identified was important to have and to be able to switch back and forth between things. And, and that's what this permits. The, the upgrade over and above that is really the, uh, the broadcast ability so that uh, and particularly when you look at the percentage of seniors that we have in the town, uh, people that might not otherwise, you know, want to come to in person a selectman's meeting or may want to participate but may not have the time to get there or need to connect by some other means, uh, you know, I sort of envision even when you're meeting in person that you could still uh, live stream these and have these available to people and and for those that aren't able for whatever reason to make it in person could still uh, participate. Now that's certainly a you know board decision on how you would want to do that. But uh, but what it what it ultimately does is makes uh, your meetings or other meetings that are held there more accessible to the public. So um, and I have to I have to say uh, the the. Everything in this building is at a high-end point. And I don't want to say it's, it's overbuilt. I don't want to say it's, it's you know, the top of the line. But it is very, it, it's very well built. It's, uh, it is, it is uh, of high quality throughout. Um, and, I, and I think those of you that have been through the building, and, and I know that John has done some work in there and he's seen the kind of workmanship and other things that are going in that the the money has been spent uh, and invested in these systems that are within the building you know to uh, really the same kind of degree as what I think we're proposing here this this now whether that whether the board feels as though this is needed to be in that um, you know that's a different story but um, but it, I do think it is in keeping uh, you know, with the the utility, the future utility of that room, and then also, um, uh, you know, I, and I guess you know it is something that could be added later on. The the difficulty with that is going to be uh, 
no one is going to want to spend money on this building once they're paying for it through their taxes is my view that uh, you know why didn't you think of that when you were building the building why wasn't it done then um all that kind of thing so but it you know ultimately it's obviously it's the board's decision and uh you know Okay. Uh, what's the number, Tim? The uh, it's just under fifty six thousand for this one. This is fifty five nine forty eight. Um, I mean, if the board if the board wished, I could arrange to have uh, the you know the principal of the company speak to the board or. Um, uh, you know, I mean, if, if there are other things that you feel as though would be helpful to you. Um, is there anybody here who wants to have a representative of the company to answer their questions? At this time, I'd like to make a motion to get the recommended uh, audiovisual equipment not to exceed. Excuse, excuse me, bro. For the, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Pat, Pat had her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Missed it. Pat? I've had my hand up before Tim. Remember you picked him? Oh, sorry. I want I don't think John's question got answered. It from from the inception of the building committee, when way before of the building committee, it has always, always, always been uh at its inception an EOC and always intended to be an EOC. And as far as the grant money, we only have one grant pocket if you would and that was homeland security mm -hmm. and that we already went through a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars correct tim uh, on a, not a, on, but that not, not necessarily on uh we had a hundred and twenty five thousand for the entire pd and there were bits and pieces that we took that from not just the eoc room so We've exhausted those funds, and and so we can't go back and use those funds on that. And so does that answer your question? So we can next year go and get funds, but not necessarily $56,000 worth for the EOC, but that has always, always, always been intended for to include an EOC in your new PD. Hope that answers your question. John? Yeah, that's exactly what I was uh, um, interested in finding out. Um, would it be possible for us to, if we are spending this money, apply for an additional Homeland Security grant um, this year to go towards that where we've already spent some money? Um, you know, previously, if you spend a certain amount, they'll match it, but it has to be within that year. Yeah. So, uh, so because of some changes uh, that were required in that grant, uh, we we weren't able to utilize the entire amount within that that time period. Uh, so there is there is some amount, but not everything qualifies for the grant, and that's where uh, we had some issues before. We had some issues of qualification. We had some issues of timing also. There were things that could not wait for the grant to be approved uh, before we needed them in place at the building. So, so that, that's that's why we weren't able to expend the total amount uh, before. Um, it would uh, it would likely um, you know I don't know what prices are going to be like uh, four or five months down the road, but. Uh, you know, we could attempt to go that route and uh, see how much of this we could get paid through the grant. The grant would have to be approved and signed by the board prior to um, prior to spending any money or even ordering uh, ordering the equipment. So we'd probably be, you know, my guess is at this point we'd probably be looking at a uh, April May time frame. Um, maybe March, March, April time frame uh, based on uh, prior grant experience with them, um, you know, to get the go ahead to, um, you know, to order and uh, install. 
but again, that might not cover, uh, you know, that might cover some things, but not everything that we want in this. And that's uh, a huge risk that you take. Well, it's certainly a risk, and uh, uh, we discovered that uh, with with simpler components than this. So, um, um, and and that was with uh, with help from uh, personnel in that in that area and uh, um, you know, more knowledgeable than I with that particular grant. So in any event, uh, uh, I, I do think that we're going to be able to, um, you know, fully utilize more grants in the future for that building. We certainly have uh, plenty of match. Um, you know, it just depends upon the eligibility of things that we can, we can apply for and get through the grant. And EOC so, is very specific. Yeah. So, are you saying that uh, you don't recommend the audiovisual equipment? Me? That's right. Oh no, no, uh, no, I, no. I think I think this is the type of thing we need. Maybe the uh, you know the one thing I'm thinking is you know I could run that through. EMPG, see what they might um, what they might cover. See if there's go back to the company. See if Northeast can determine how we can pull that back out and what we could do. You know, waiting for that grant to be approved. I mean, we we could go that route. It's just a little dicier. It, I mean, it doesn't mean that we end up with anything less than what you want. It just might take a little longer and might mean that we've got to hold back some money uh, from the town side uh, in, in case it doesn't cover that. So in other words, we could hold back $56,000, uh, hoping that some of that is going to be covered by the grant. Um, and whatever isn't, then we would have that in reserve. Uh, and then whatever is left over after that, we could apply to the principal of the, of the loan, you know, at some, you know, towards the end of 21 or something. I mean, that is a possibility as well. It really is a matter of timing. If the board wants to have something in place, all bright and shiny, you know, when we're in, at the end of February, uh, we would have to pull the trigger on this now. If uh, you can wait six months and see what we can get in grants um, and what we would have to hold back, then, uh, then we should, you know, we should wait uh, longer. But I do think that this, proposal uh, should be approved in terms of, um, of moving forward to a grant stage. Not that we would order it, but that we would see what we could get paid for by the grant. Eric? Uh, of this, either of these proposals, what is the the other costs are going to be associated with this in the future that will affect IT to, you know, licenses and things like that? Uh, there's not, a, there's not a lot, but um, more than likely um, on, on this type of equipment, we, we um, like with our phone system, we would have somebody come in on an annual basis. Now our phone company hasn't charged us for that. But the, the second year that we had it, I budgeted for it, uh, thinking that we would get charged for it, expecting to get charged for it, and they did it for free. Uh, I don't believe there's any ongoing license uh, with this. I, um, uh, I recall asking that in terms of licensing. I don't think there wasn't any subscription or other type of thing that we had to pay for um, uh, that I can recall. But but um, all this equipment also would be in the in the uh, communications room, in the racks, so that uh, none of the, none of this, aside from the uh, tablet-looking thing that I talked about, uh, would be in the uh, EOC conference room itself. Okay, thank you. You're muted, Joe, and I didn't mute you. No, I muted myself. I was trying to help you out. Uh, do we wait or do we go? Pat, you want to wait or go? 
pull the trigger now. Let's go get it out of the contingency money. Eric? Yeah, uh, I was just looking at the two. Go for it. Peter? Wait for grant money. John? Yes, um, yeah, I, I like the idea. I like everything. I'd like to try and um, see if we can get any monies at all to uh, cover for any of this portion of this. Wait. I will make a motion to move forward with the purchase of the audio vis visual equipment that Tim has recommended for the Emergency Operations Center not to exceed $56,000. Is there a second? Pyra second. Uh, Pyra seconded it. Motion and a second. Um, Peter, John, either one of you want to speak to this again? I'm a no if we're not looking at grants. So I'll just run it through and let's move on. John? Okay. Uh, roll call vote. All those in favor say aye. Pyra? Pyra, yes. Constantino? Constantino, yes. Cameron? No. Fog? Fog, no. Jessamine is a yes. The motion passes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, next up on the agenda is the selectmen's reports. First on the list is Eric Pyra. Um, I don't have much to report. Um, I haven't been in town much, so I haven't. I have not had a chance to do anything. So I will say I have nothing to say. Okie dokie. That's a lot of words to say nothing. Uh, John Scanlon. Yeah, it's, there there isn't much to say. Uh, t just uh, twenty one doesn't feel any different than twenty. <laughs> um, you know, we're we're just trudging along. And I, I'd like to thank all the people who, you know, I've noticed around town, a lot of people are wearing masks. They're being super courteous, nice to everybody, and uh, coming together on this and uh, trying to beat this corona thing. Um, and that's about it. Yeah. Thank you, John. Uh, Pat Constantino. I just have one comment rather than anything else is just that um, uh, a, a speedy, speedy recovery goes out to Tommy from T-Hop. Um, they announced that their T-Hop is closed, not because of COVID, but because Tommy had an accident and he's due to have surgery very shortly. So uh, speedy recovery goes out to Tommy and the T-Hop family. That's it. That's all I have. Yeah. Uh, wow. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Uh, Peter Fogg. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to announce that the 2020 municipal parking stickers are expired. I'd like to remind people that now is the time to get your 2021 municipal parking stickers. Due to COVID-19, you need to call the police department directly to make an appointment to get your sticker. For those listening, the direct line to the police department is 286-8207. Uh, I'd also like to announce that uh, you need, in order to drop off at the transfer station, you need a current Town of Tilton sticker um, for the dump. Well, the transfer station is not a dump. Uh, and you can get one of those if you don't already have one by calling the town clerk's office directly and making an appointment. Um, then January 20th through the 29th is filing for town elected positions. Our town clerk tax collector has advised that she will have the declaration of candidacy application online on the town website and we'll be posting on Facebook. 
She is waiting to hear from the Secretary of State's office about in-person submissions. If you have any questions, please call the town clerk's office directly. Uh, I'd like to announce that uh, we're in the midst of the winter parking ban, which started on November 15th and remains in effect until April 15th. No vehicles may be parked on town streets between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. through April 15th. Um, that is the end of my report. And we're going to move right along to Jeannie uh, for the town administrator's report. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So you all should have gotten my weekly update this afternoon. I just had three action items, Senate Bill 30, which is the bill that is going to permit the towns of Tilton and Northfield to redraw their boundary lines. It is scheduled for public hearing next Thursday morning at 9. I have already signed up to testify on behalf of the town. Uh, they're doing all the hearings via Zoom. And I wanted to bring that to the board's attention and see if anyone on the board side would like to either attend or um, testify. And I do know that Stephanie Giovannucci and the new town administrator, not so new, Ken, I can't remember his last name right now, but they plan to attend and testify as well. Robichaud. Robichaud. So is, is any board member... It, I asked the question because I can send you the link information if that's something you, you're interested in. Or if you want to testify, you need to sign up. I'd like to attend. Okay, I will send you the link information. The second item on my action list is <clears throat> um, you all received a letter from Sergeant Buffington who asked about purchasing the polygraph equipment. And uh, that he, he had proposed $1,500. And the question I have for the board is, how would you like to proceed on that? I think uh, Tim and I have both discussed it. I, um, I, I, I thought that um, if we were going to do it, that we should get free polygraphs for the, for, forever. <laughs> Tim thought that we could do uh, 12, ask for 12 polygraphs with no uh, time limit. If uh, if you decided to go for it, we should get something for this beyond the, the $1,500. Okay. He typically charges $175, um, at least when we were billing through the town for his polygraph work. And the equipment's about eight years old. So, Pat, would you like to start the discussion? I did have a conversation with Detective um, Buffington or Sergeant Buffington, and um, he did he did say that he would uh, open the uh, or give the town of Tilton uh, free polygraphs. Absolutely, no problem with that. Anytime. I didn't limit it. I didn't. I did not have a discussion with Tim or Jeannie. I I did have a discussion with them, and he said anytime. Of course, no problem. And we okay. Could get that. And we could get that in writing, absolutely. In writing. Yes. Do we, do we know an estimated value of the detector? Is 1500 in range or is it 15000 I don't know what they run for. I know it's eight years old, so it's going to be down in value. I think we paid 3000 it was, it was over that. It was about 5100 I think, at the time. Okay. All right. Oh, if we can get free uh, service, I'm all for it. Anybody else? Eric? Was it purchased with grant money or taxpayer money? And if it was grant money, are we allowed to sell it? I believe it was taxpayer money. Uh, I can check on that. John? Um, if we were to be hiring a replacement person, a detective, or somebody like that, and they are already certified on that machine, 
maybe we should wait just a little bit. I like his offer. I like the idea that he'll off, um, be giving it to us, but we could actually end up with somebody in-house. There are nobody in certified in New Hampshire. My understanding is that there are nobody in certified in New Hampshire. The, so, the school is in Pennsylvania now. Right. Yeah. Well, the school but, closed. Go ahead. I said that we could hire somebody that's possibly already certified in that. Seeing as it was in New Hampshire, there's probably, I don't think he was the only person in New Hampshire that was certified to operate one of those machines. So I, I think we could wait a little bit because we're going to be looking into this. That's all. Anybody else? I'll make a motion to sell the uh, polygraph equipment to uh, Nate Buffington for fifteen hundred dollars. Is there a second? Constantino, second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other, Eric? We left out right. his his offer of free polygraphs for life. Yeah, that has to be part part of the written. Well, I would I would uh, make that a condition of the motion. Right. Anybody else? Peter. As long as the motion says the uh, services, I'm good. Yep. Okay. Uh, hearing no, no other uh, discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Roll call vote. Pyra. Pyra, yes. Scanlon. No. Constantino. Constantino, yes. Uh, yes. Specimen, yes. The motion carries. Jeannie? Thank you. <clears throat> the last action item I have is to bring you up to date on um, one of the board members had asked a couple weeks ago about our liability or our exposure with the ice rink relative to COVID. So I checked with Primex um, to find out uh, what they had to say. I provided all that information to all of you in an email. I did attend the Parks Commission meeting the other night, and um, the commission asked um, if the board would reinstall the sign that was up about rules. <clears throat> I reviewed the sign with Bob Hardy, and it does not say anything about skating at your own risk or that hockey is prohibited, which are those are two of the things that Primex recommended be in the language. Um, so I'm suggesting that if we're going to install a sign, that we should install a sign with the language that's recommended by Prime. So that's my question to you is do you want to have a new sign made up that has the preferred language uh, recommended by our insurance company, or would you like the old sign um, reinstalled? Or do you want to just do nothing? I guess there are three options. I would like to reinstall the sign, but uh, I'd like to know how much the sign is going to cost us and who's going to make it first. I like the concept. So, anybody I, else, Peter? Oh, the, sorry, Jeannie. I don't know if the president oh, okay. makes signs. If not, the sign show. You got sign makers in town that do. Oh, I know they do. Jeannie? So I can I could get quotes, uh, you know, to see what that would cost. You are planning, Jeannie, on keeping the rules on the original sign and then adding the Primex ones reference the skating and hockey. Well, that that's a that's a good question, um, and I guess um, a question for the board: if that sign, if the sign right now goes back up, is reinstalled, it uh, says I think it says something like uh, by order of the Parks Commission or the Parks Commission and the property right now is currently under the board's purview so what what do you want to do there 
And so if we put that one back up, what happened? That, is that just me? Hello? Can anyone hear me? Yep. Yeah, we, oh, yeah. Okay. Every, yeah, I, my, I, whole, I, my, whole, my whole screen blanked out for a minute. So um, <laughs> two things. If we, we can put the old sign back up if you want, if, if that's what the board wants, just be aware that the, it does say it's from the Parks Commission and currently the property is under the purview of the select board. Um, and then we could get quotes on the other sign. But then my question is for the other sign, do you want anything to say under the purview of the select board, under the purview of the Parks Commission? If it's under the Parks Commission, do they pay for the sign? These are questions um, I need some guidance on. Um, I would say we reinstall a new sign that includes the, the hockey and skate at your own risk because those are the two big ones that weren't on the other sign and that we should sign it Board of Selectmen for order of the Board of Selectmen. Eric? I had an itch, sorry. Uh, I saw your hand up. <laughs> uh, Peter? I'm a no. It's, you've got a parks commission. It's like, let them have it. Okay, John? Um, well, I, I don't know who's the ultimate um, person on the in policy. Is it the parks commission or is it the selectmen that i mean if you put the selectmen doesn't it cover everything regardless and it's, it's the town right it's the town and and it's the, the it's insured by the town so ultimately it comes back to the town and the select board i think we, yeah it comes back to the select board because it is the town except for the select board had given the authority to the parks commission at one time, but the psych board now has uh, responsibility for that piece of property currently. Right, temporarily, right. Well, how about put parks in Board of Selectmen? Everybody in agreement with that? As long as we put Board of Selectmen on any other committee and all that approves something, that we approve it also. Be uniform. Yeah. Okay. It's only temporary. You're going to get it back. So you put Parks Commission on it. If you're worried at the beginning, you tape over and put Board of Selectmen. When it's done, you peel the tape. Simple. Eric, you guys don't think things really. Wow. Eric? I'll go with the consensus. <laughs> Okay, um, I'll make a motion to reinstall the sign um, over at the property on 132 to include the uh, warnings about skating at your own risk and no hockey allowed um, per order of the Board of Selectmen. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Kyra. Kyra, yes. Scanlon. Yes. Constantino. No. Fog, no. Fog. Uh, Jesselman is a yes. The motion carries. Okay, next. Just for clarification, Mr. Chairman, um, are you are you asking me to get a quote for for a new sign? Is that yes, please? Okay, thank you. Um, and I I don't need to go through my FYI, but I did want to just point out the and remind the board that we have that check presentation by Paul Gaudet 
this Saturday at three o'clock at the uh, new police station. And I'm hoping, um, not sure if I heard from everyone, but I'm hoping everyone can be there. Um, and that's it other than, oh, oh, is that who's coming? <laughs> Eric, okay. do you have a question? Pat, Pat had her hand up first. Oh. oh, Pat? I have a question. On your FYI, yep. um, under the second bullet, yep. I'm, I have a question as to the to differentiate the licensing um, on alcohol. We first had alcohol license to the same person um, in a permanent location. And nothing was given to us to to for approval at all. It was just done. It was just done. Now and that's why, and that's why you're getting it now because you brought that to to our attention. And so going forward, you will get every single one of these. All right. So so my end. So okay, I understand now. So we, we it we. It was done in the past that it comes to the approval for the Board of Selectmen. So now, then I have a question about this. If this is to the board now, this is a portable. This isn't for events at this place. This license is a portable license to go with the, with the business. Yes. So... Is that different from what we would encourage for liquor licensing other, elsewhere for permanent places? I know back when we were trying to decide whether or not we were going to grant a licensing to um, um, I forget the name of the business, La Pia, Pia's, what, uh, Jim Cropsey's building that place the catering place up there there was um controversial uh because it was a liquor license and a catering and it was portable at that time because it wasn't just at that building therefore it could be in the parks department it could be in the parks at a wedding where the where the liquor was being dis distributed and so on and so forth. I just want us to be informed as to what the differences are. It's not a permanent building that we're granting this license to. It's it's uh, a catering functions throughout the, the town. Right, and to be clear, the, the board, is, as I understand the RSA, you don't have any granting authority. All, it, all they are offering you is the the division of um, liquor it is for you to weigh in to make to weigh comments. in our, con to, to it, weigh in right. our concerns, correct? Right. right. And, the, and 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 the liquor commission takes our concerns very seriously, and they have in the past. So I'm just putting that out there. I I, I listen. I'm for it. So I, I I'm not voting in 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 not in favor of this but we have new members of the board that don't understand what the, entirely the the format is i just want to make sure that this is because it's very different than what we did before that we didn't have a chance to grant to not grant but weigh in on the the uh liquor license that was granted prior now we have a chance to weigh in on this and i want to make sure that this is told to the selectmen in the right way. Oh, I think that if this board has any concerns or comments, that you should uh, make those known to the division. Does everybody Does anybody have that? any concern? Pat, you have concerns? I don't have any concerns, but I just wanted to make sure that folks like Eric know what, what would, would de I know he's on the planning board, but also if we have the power to voice our concerns to the commission if we have concerns. Okay, Eric? I, uh, I'll comment on this and then I had an, another question. Um, 
this type of license that they are actually going for allows them as a caterer to operate and offer liquor at all of their functions across the state, not just limited to the town of Tilton. So uh, I'm actually very familiar with this type of process. If they got hired to cater something uh, on on an island in the middle of uh, uh, Lake, uh, um, Lake Winnesquam somewhere, then that license allows them to, to serve there. My other question was on, if I could just briefly change the subject, if it can be, the check presentation is that indoors or outdoors? Because Saturday at three o'clock, the weather is not supposed to be very cooperative. I, I haven't looked at what's the weather supposed to be like. Uh, what do you mean? More snow. Well, uh, if, if, it, if it looks like it's going to be rain, then we might have to reschedule. Um, I haven't looked that far ahead. So I'm happy to take a look and um, I'll reach out to Paul. And if, as we get closer to the time, it looks like it's not good, we can just reschedule to the following Saturday. I don't imagine you'd want to do it inside the building because you'd want to see the outside of the building. John? I'm good, rain or shine. I'll wear my... Uh bathing suit. Yeah, just let me know. I'll, I'll be there no matter what. I'll be there. I, I, right. plan okay. to be, I plan to be there, but I have to come from an area where it might be snowing, so uh, I have to plan accordingly. Okay, well, uh, I'll, I'll check in with Paul and see if he has any um, concerns one way or the other. Since we're so ahead of schedule, I wonder if I could have a few few minutes of your time because we were, and I appreciate the support for the building, uh, the moving, but I, I, there are a couple things I do want to go over with you because I, you know, um, I just think it's important for you to know. A starving artist was the one who was recommended and I, after looking through all the paperwork, I think that was a right recommendation but um there are a lot of other things going on with this move as you might imagine there's going to be a data destruction where they're going to have to destroy documents and they've got a shredder coming in for that um they're going to have a as i understand it um canard has donated a dumpster so they can start dumping trash things that they don't need to take and and they're doing right now they're starting to clean uh the the current police station and taking things that are trash or old or they don't need and getting rid of that. So they've started the process. Um, the, the move also includes making sure that the flooring is going to be protected when they, you know, when they move all the file cabinets and they're going to identify one point of access for the entry of moving everything into the building. So they're not coming in from all different ways. Um, the DPW right now has uh, a 20-foot Connex box um, and some other things, but that, the as you might imagine, the evidence and the armory are special, it requires special move um, and cannot be done by the moving company, so will be done by the police department. Um, so there are some things down at the DPW that, that will be moved. Um, 179. East Main Street is the primary move, uh, and that's the the bulk of this. Well, actually, the whole um, the move with starving artists. 67 Main Street, you know, has um, all the furniture that was donated from um, that the chief had got donated, and that has to be a separate move. That has to be all that furniture has to be moved and installed. Uh, some of it is. It needs to be retrofitted or uh, reassembled. Um, so that's going to be an additional, whether it was starving artists or any other mover, it was going to be an additional anywhere from $22 to $2,500 to make that move. Um, so that's separate from the starving artist bid. Starving artist is still going to do it, um, but it's, it's separate from the main move. Um, I did speak with Kevin because all the moving companies. I didn't feel confident in um, their 
ability to assemble the furniture that we got donated and to uh, make sure that it looked good. I know Kevin will take care. I know he will make it look good and take his time. I talked to him and he said um, he could do that for us. Uh, so I'm going to go down to the building next week with him to take a look at all that furniture so he can see what he's what he's uh, fa uh, facing or what he's challenged with. Um, the copier um, will be the it will be wrapped by uh, the copier company. Uh, it will be the last thing on the truck and the first thing off. They have to pay special care so that doesn't get damaged. All the computer server equipment, Tim has, has arranged for all of that. Um, that will be moved by uh, Cybertron. And um, the... But just the server and firewall and yeah. networking. Yeah. Uh, the IT equipment um, has identified that. We've talked with the folks over there and the filing cabinets, all, all the IT equipment has been identified and there's a plan to, to, that each person will disassemble their own, put it in boxes and move it over. And um, that's really about it. I just wanted to give you the whole scope of it. Um, it's not just that one piece. Oh, and one other thing, and then I'll take your question. Um, so you may have uh, heard mention earlier months ago about wanting to get high density storage in the uh, in the new PD, but that was going to come at a cost, and so we said no. We're just going to use our old file cabinets. Well, um, Tanger Outlets. Uh, some of the stores are closing over there, and they have high density storage um, files that they've agreed to give us for free. Um, so we are in the process of finding somebody who knows how to disassemble and reassemble that. And Nike is also closing, and they have um, bins that we will be able to get for free to use for our, um, our uh, evidence, uh, scoring evidence. And uh, the stove did get donated, and uh, I think... I think that's it. But I, like I said, I just wanted to give you the whole scope of it. And John, you had a question? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, town Hall. Basement. Yes. yes. Oh, yes, that was there. So I, I did. We did talk about that too. That will that will get moved, but we're moving everything else in first, and then we're going to come back and uh, get everything out of town hall. And uh, I told them I want a timeline and a schedule on that so it doesn't get forgotten. Mm -hmm. Do we need to make a motion to accept the uh, various pieces of equipment when we get a schedule of what they are exactly? Yeah, once we get confirmation of it, I think that would be a good idea. And make that Anybody timeline else? make that timeline a short timeline for the town hall one so yeah. that it doesn't really doesn't get forgotten. Oh, I won't let it get forgotten. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Anybody else? So that, that was it. Great job, you guys. It. Great job. Have you lost the bet to Tim yet? I, I was beginning to wonder if she was just uh, trying to find things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other business to come before the Board of Selectmen in public session? I hate to say it, but I have I have, I have uh, two things. Under other business. Okay. There you go. Right. So, uh, so the first thing is um, that uh, we are um, moving ahead with uh, the projected closing uh, for the old uh, police station. And uh, that's, we're working on that uh, with Attorney Radigan, uh, who'll be representing the town for the closing. And uh, that seems to be on track as far as we know at this point. Um, and just wanted to let you know that that's still in the works. And then also uh, I have the estimated revenues uh, for you there in the board packet. 
uh, area. And uh, uh, I can uh, put them up on the screen if, uh, if you would mind just taking a quick look. Um, let's see, let me just share it here. All right, here we go. So the, uh, the bottom line here is that we're projecting uh, $70,000 less in revenue in 2021 versus 2020. And, the, the, um, and that's versus budgeted revenues, I should say. The major changes are in uh, rooms and meals. Uh, after a lot of talking and analysis and uh, some great sleuth work by Jeannie, uh, we, uh, and this was in coordination with Jeannie, we thought it was prudent to uh, take about 5% off of that, but otherwise state revenues look to be uh, pretty secure for the town. Our school resource officer, uh, we had a change in officers, also a reduced year, and, um, and because of that, it's just less money. Uh, we went from uh, one of the most expensive officers to um, um, a less expensive officer. Uh, we are anticipating we're going to have a lack of some other revenues on either side of the school resource officer line. And, um, and then in the, um, um, trying to think where the other line was that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, then motor vehicles have been very strong, but, um, but it's hard to imagine the current pace proceeding forward so that the uh, projected is about 5% less than the actual for 2020. So that brings us to bottom line, uh, not including, so you can compare apples to apples, not including the sewer, which is simply an offset. Uh, we'd be going from 1,640 down to 1,570. Uh, with the sewer, it's 2,149 and uh, 2,207. Uh, and the difference there being the fact that the, the sewer pass-through is higher for 2021 than it was for 2020. Uh, that does bring me to one other point. Uh, the Board of Selectmen should, at some point, I believe, uh, vote on the uh, Sewer Commission's uh, recommended uh, budget pass-through. And, um, and then these uh, estimates are what I would like to give to the uh, Budget Committee this next week. Make a motion. We uh, accept the sewer pass-through budget of six hundred and thirty-six thousand seven hundred and forty-nine dollars. Second that, Scanla. Oh, you're muted. And I didn't yeah, mute okay. You. Peter, do you have any uh, discussion or input? I don't know why we're voting on a, the separate governing body's budget. We're equal power. Sewer and selectmen, we just govern different things. I think it just simply represents, uh, because the, uh, the total uh, Warren article budget would be uh, including sewer that's shown for the budget committee. And so therefore, if someone asked, well, what did the selectmen approve? You know, this would, uh, this would also be in that number. That'd be like asking the sewer commission to approve the selectmen's budget. It's, to me, it's, if there's questions on sewer, the sewer commission answers at town meeting. There's always at least one there. Okay, is there any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Please signify by saying aye. Uh, Pyra? Pyra, yes. Hammond? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, Constantino? Constantino, yes. 
Bog, no. Uh, Jessamine is a yes. The motion carries. Okay. Do you have any other business, Tim or Jeannie? Do we have to make a motion to accept the re revenues, the estimated revenues? Or no? Yeah. Uh, Yes, I would say uh, you should, uh, as long as they're noted that they're estimates. So I make a motion that we accept the estimated revenues of $2,207,220. Two I second. Is there any discussion? Is it going in the town report at that figure? Because if it is, it's no longer estimated. Do you put them in a whole budget is an estimate? Well, right. I mean, uh, right. But it, in other words, uh, when town meeting votes to approve the appropriation, that is the amount. The revenues are still estimated for the purposes of the tax rate. Are there other questions or comments? Hearing none. Um, all of those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Ira? Ira, yes. Alan? Yes. Constantino? Constantino, yes. Uh, uh, sure. Um, and Jessamine is a yes, and apparently we have a unanimous vote. The motion carries. Is there any other? Got nothing else to drag this out, Tim? So is uh, I was just asked, wondering, is it Tim said the meeting won't last as long, or Jeannie said it won't last as long? Tim. That's not fair. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know, I, you know, four score and seven years ago. Uh, okay. Okay. Forth upon the continent. Yeah, no, I'm, leaving. I'm not going to spend the whole night. <laughs> All right, let's move on. The time on. being, the time being, 6.57 p.m., I'd like to make a motion to move into non-public session per RSA 91-A, semicolon 3, paragraph 2A, the dismissal, promotion, or compensation of any public employee or the disciplining of such employee or the investigation of charges against him or her unless the employee affected has a right to a public meeting and two requests that the meeting be open, in which case the request shall be granted. RSA 91-A, semicolon three, paragraph two B, the hiring of any person as a public employee. RSA 91-A, semicolon three, paragraph two C, matters which would likely adversely affect the reputation of any person other than a member of this board. We expect to be back into public session at approximately 8.45 p.m. Do I have a second? Constantino, second. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none. Link. Go ahead, John. Yeah, I'm just trying to find the link again. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so uh, we'll have a roll call vote. Please signify by saying aye. Uh, Constantino? Constantino, aye. Ira? Ira, aye. Scanlon? Scanlon, aye. Og? Og, yes. And Jessamine is an aye as well. The motion carries unanimously. Um, we'll now enter into non-public session, and I'll see you guys over on the other side.
This conference will now be recorded. Okay, um, the time being 9-11. I'd like to seal the minutes of the non-public session of January 14th, 2021, because the reasons justifying the need for the non-public session still remain. Is there a second? Constantino, second. We have a motion in a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, uh, roll call vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Ira? Ira, yes. Scanlon? Scanlon, yes. Constantino? Yes. Clog, yes. There you go. And Jessamine is yes. Uh, is there any other business that will come before us this evening in a public session? Yes, Joe. I think we need to okay. formal. I just think we need to formally, um, publicly uh, let the public know of the two two people leaving. If uh, Jeannie wants to announce it, or you want to announce it, we haven't done that publicly. Um, who exactly are we talking about? PARs? The PARs that we signed, the resignation, we signed a communication specialist, supervisor, and a detective sergeant. Oh, yes. Um, well, there you go. Um, Pat, why did, you've already started. Go ahead. Uh, so we uh, respectfully uh, accept the Resignation of a communication specialist, Elizabeth Morse, and uh, Detective Sergeant Nate Buffington, um, who submitted their resignations effectively effective this week, regretfully. We hate to see him go. Is that and, um, sad? I personally would like to thank them for their service. Um, they've both been excellent employees. Uh, detective Buffington is one heck of a detective and will be missed, no doubt. Ditto. Thank other, you, Joe. Is there any other business or comments? Hearing none, motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, motion to adjourn is non-debatable. Roll call vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Ira. Aye. Ira, yes. Ellen, yes. yes. Constantino, yes. Fog, yes. Fog. Desmond, yes. Thank you all, and good night. Thank night. you, Jeannie and Tim. Bye.